power prices go negative in Germany. A positive for end users? Germany has spent over 175 billion euros, or just shy of 200 billion dollars, over the past two decades to promote cleaner sources of electricity. That enormous investment, whilst cleaning up the grid, is now having the unexpected impact on consumers, who are actually pay to use power on occasions. Power prices recently plunged below zero on the EPEX spot, a large European power trading exchange, as a result of low demand, unseasonally warm weather and strong breezes that provide an abundance of wind power onto the grid. Such negative prices are not the norm in Germany, but they're far from rare, thanks to the country's efforts to encourage investment in greener forms of power generation. Prices for electricity in Germany have dipped below zero, meaning consumers are paid to consume power more than 100 times in the past year alone, according to EPEX Spot. But what causes negative prices? Well, basically, when the supply of power outstrips demand for it. Demand is particularly low on weekends and holidays when factories are idle and offices are empty. The energy supplies that Germany depends on, however, are far less predictable than they used to be. Wind power, in particular, is highly dependent on changes in weather patterns. Giant spinning turbines produce, on average, around 12% of Germany's power, but on windy days they can generate several times that amount. At the same time, the other mainstreams of the country's electricity supply, especially some coal and nuclear power plants, are unable to dial back quickly enough, leading to negative prices on the trading markets, as supply spills over and overwhelms demand. Several countries across Europe have also experienced negative power prices, Belgium, Britain, France, Netherlands and Switzerland for example. But Germany's foray into negative prices is the most frequent. At times, it has to be said, Germany, extensively connected to the rest of Europe's power network, is able to export its surplus electricity to its neighbours, helping to balance the market. Still, this isn't always possible. Their markets themselves are saturated, and so it experiences negative prices far more often and far deeper than other countries. One recent example saw power prices spending 31 hours below zero, and at one point they dipped as low as minus 83 euros, or minus $98 a megawatt hour on the wholesale markets. In other words, anyone who was able to hook up a large blast of electricity for that time was paid €83 Euros per megawatt for the trouble. We're all familiar with the concept of supply and demand, and demand on the power grid is fairly easy to predict. It's low overnight, it's high when we're showering in the mornings, and then higher in the evening when everyone's switching on their TVs and cookers. But... It's the supply side that's causing the real problem. Now, the major drawback with both wind and solar power is they wax and wane with the breeze and the sunshine and don't respond when the power's actually needed. An obvious solution would be to sort of suck in and store the power when it was produced and use it later in the day. There is infrastructure to do this. Pump storage, for example, where you pump water to the top of a hill and it flow down later on can be used, but there's not sufficient quantities there to supply the whole grid. Down the line, a lot of hope is pinned on battery storage, both on the grid level and a vast suite of electric vehicles to manage to suck up the power when we're not using it. Battery storage capacities, however, are not yet advanced enough to take in all of the excess generation. And because older power plants that run on fossil fuels take a long time to ramp up and reduce electricity generation, they're not able to respond decisively enough to the shifting supply. Like most traditional power systems we see across the world, Germany's was designed to match output to demand. As Tobias Kurth, the managing director of Energy Brainpool, a Berlin-based consulting firm, says, One of the key challenges in the whole transition to the energy market is renewable power. We now have technology that cannot produce according to demand, but is producing according to the weather. This does beg the question of what can actually be done, though. Negative prices indicate that Germany's power grid like most of the others around the world, has not yet adapted to the increasing amounts of renewable generation that's being produced. Put bluntly, there's a whole lot of stress on the grid. For now, technological improvements that would help store additional power and better distribute it across countries are lagging. But regulatory tweaks could make a difference. Germany, for example, does not do enough to encourage customers to increase their use at times of power oversupply. On a basic level, that can be as simple as providing incentives for people to turn on washing machines when power is plentiful and cheap. Companies as well can make even better use of such guidance, ramping up energy-hungry tasks at times of low-cost electricity. Coming back to our central point, therefore, 
do German consumers, and by extension, consumers around the world, benefit from negative prices? Clearly not directly. The wholesale costs of power make up only around a fifth of the average household bill. The rest is a slew of taxes, fees to finance renewable energy investments, and charges for use of the grid. Whilst this means that bills are lower than they otherwise would be, certainly for the power price component, negative prices will of course eventually feed through, all those other charges I mentioned actually far outweigh the negative pricing components and household bills have actually risen over the last few years. Whilst negative prices are creating problems for power generators, they're also enhancing the value of their more flexible installations, including large storage systems, and this will also soon factor into consumer, who will be paid for your flexible generator themselves. In fact, we can think of each consumer on the system will soon be a micro power station. The electric vehicle in our driveway, the battery storage in our garage, the solar plants on our roof, and our smart appliances, each responding dynamically and flexibly to the requirements and needs of the grid. One of the biggest concerns with renewable energy is what to do when the wind stops blowing or the sun stops shining. But sometimes, as we've seen, you can actually have the opposite problem. As renewable energy becomes more prevalent, countries are going to have to figure out ways to store that energy and manage that flexibility for long periods of time. Whilst energy storage, smart grids and flexibility can help to smooth out the power grid, a constant power supply is better than one that's always fluctuating. Even if, sometimes, that fluctuating grid actually gives us free power.